Hola, everybody. It's Kaipacha with the weekly Pele report for December 8th of 2021. And there it is. The tree minus a few leaves. I want to talk about that a little bit in today's report. <laughs> I'm up here, I had my grandchild there last week, and I'm going to be around up north here in the cloudy, coldy weather for the holidays, and ah, anyway, on a uh, celestial astrological uh, uh, note, we have uh, got uh, today, Mars is in square to Jupiter, exact. Uh, moon is moving through Aquarius. Uh, tomorrow, Thursday, she is going to go into uh, Pisces. Hit that moon. I hit Neptune. Yeah. Uh, square the sun on Friday. Moon comes along, conjuncts uh, with Neptune, squares the sun. And then on Saturday, uh, you know, continues on uh, just making a trine with Mars. Over there in late Scorpio before she moves into Aries on Saturday. Meanwhile, Mars is moving into Sagittarius. Okay, that, that is happening on Monday. Monday is a bit, a bit of a shift. Uh, that uh, Mars is not only moving into Sag, but then we've also got Mercury moving into Capricorn. So, uh, water to fire, right? And fire to earth with the Mercury. Things are going to get serious here. We got Venus moving along through Capricorn. Mercury's going to join uh, Venus and Capricorn. Then the Sun is going to come around and join Mercury and Venus and Pluto and Capricorn. And we've got more Capricorn ruled by Saturn going on here for a while. Yeah. And uh, the big thing that I want to be talking about here is Venus. Venus is coming up to conjoin with Pluto. Yeah, we so we have this big Venus-Pluto conjunction happening. And she is going to conjoin with Pluto um, at the 25th degree of Capricorn. And I want to read to you the Sabian symbol. I want to talk about that. Then she's going to go up. She's going to station, okay, um, at 26 degrees, like within one degree of Pluto. She stations, turns retrograde, and goes backward. So she's in Capricorn for four months, <laughs> and she's at the 25th degree, basically, uh, you know, from uh, December 11th to the 28th, okay? So, you know, uh, more than two weeks, uh, and, and, and then, you know, it's 10 days at the one degree of 26 degrees. That's a lot, but... The last thing I want to uh, be talking about, in, in, you know, besides Venus, Pluto, this change of Mercury and Mars, is the Sun squares Saturn on Sunday. Same day that uh, the Moon comes along to conjunct Chiron. Uh, Saturday night, Sunday, uh, you know, Sun square Neptune goes for a few days. Uh, I'm going to be talking about that a little bit. And let me look at the camera. All right, everybody. <laughs> Kaipacha has gone high tech, Mr. Natural. <laughs> Out there by the river, I got to tell you, I am a warm weather wimp, man. This cold weather is just like not my cup of tea. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to head out hiking and stuff. What I have to do is I got to now, I got to buy some, uh, you know, pants and boots and gloves and hat and everything and get out there. But I don't know, you know, I, we may be getting some Paley reports uh, from uh, indoors <laughs> these days. So what have I got? Virtual reality. How about this one? This is even better, man. Um, since I, I really don't want to get any, I don't want to get anybody sick, you know, uh, I think that I should really uh, take care of myself here because, you know, I have a social responsibility with Saturn and Aquarius, uh, even though we're on Zoom. <laughs> 
<laughs> How about this one? And, you know, just, you know, because I am a good citizen, I am going to wear this for my Zoom call. Oh, God. It's too freaking funny, man. Uh, I've also got, of course, you know, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Uh, this is one of my, this is the doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay, let's get serious here because really we have a lot of serious uh, uh, stuff to uh, discuss right now. It's good to keep your sense of humor, uh, you know, with uh, Venus moving through Capricorn um, and uh, all of this uh, energy going on right now with uh, Mercury going into uh, Capricorn. Uh, because it is sober, reflective, uh, remorseful, uh, you know, and Venus is going to go retrograde for uh, reflection and remorse and redo and restructure and repair and remember and all the re's that go along with retrogrades. <laughs> Basically, she's going to be going down into the underworld. This is the time where you now see Venus and she's been high up in the night sky at sunset, right? She's been, you know, she's been our evening star. Well, she is going to be going lower, 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 lower until she's so close to the sun within 10 degrees where we're not going to see her at all. And you know, uh, and then it, it through that retrograde process, I showed you last week, if you go to last week's Pele report, I did uh, the Astroscope software to show you uh, what this phenomena, uh, you know, looks like, uh, you know, and why uh, it appears as if Venus is going backwards, retrograde uh, through the stars. It's just that the, the way that the, the alignment happens as we both Earth and Venus uh, uh, rotate, uh, not orbit around the sun, and, and Pluto is way out there. So we have this alignment of uh, sun, not sun, but well, we will. The sun will come up to align with Pluto, but uh, we have Venus conjoined with Pluto for um, basically the rest of December. The descent of Inanna into the underworld. I actually do a meditation. Uh, uh, it's just an audio uh, that uh, is available on my website. I could put a link for it down below. But this is basically Inanna going through the seven gates, descending down into the underworld. And then she rises back up. But it is a process. Like we say, she is in the sign of Capricorn for four months. And what is it, you know, what does this all mean? And particularly now that we have, uh, she's exactly conjunct Pluto on Friday. Okay. And this is the first. So she's going to come up to Pluto and conjoin him on Friday and then go up to 26 degrees, go retrograde and come back and hit him right around Christmas. Right, and then go, uh, you know, retrograde back to 11 degrees of uh, Capricorn before she comes direct again and goes into Aquarius. Well, she's then she'll conjunct Pluto a third time, probably like late February, early March, before she scoots into Aquarius. <clears throat> so Venus. In Capricorn, I'll probably be talking about her for quite some time. <laughs> you know, in Capricorn, Capricorn is and so has so much to do with integrity. And it has to do with a stripping away of our persona, of our mask, of the social, uh, you know, you know, we all try to look good in order to get the job, in order to attract customers, in order to attract partners. Okay, you know, we try to, you know, we put our best foot forward. And, and this public face, okay, this, this public persona, this business suit and tie or, <laughs> you know, whatever you put on, okay, you know, in order to look good, in order to appear 
responsible, dependable, knowledgeable, in order to get treated with dignity, we all have Saturn somewhere. We all have Capricorn somewhere. We all have a 10th house. This is the archetype of the elder that has to do with duty, with responsibility, with objectivity, with showing up and pushing that, you know, card in the time slot, you know, yes, I work. <laughs> yes, I fulfill a public, uh, you know, role. We all have some kind of public role and even also with the family. So this has to do with, you know, of course, uh, you know, this pressure to perform, pressure to show up, pressure to grow up, pressure to honor our commitments, pressure to, you know, to make contracts and deliver on those contracts. So we're all under pressure. And we've been a lot of, of under pressure, okay, you know, with Pluto since 2008, moving through Capricorn has, you know, exerted a lot of pressure on us. And of course, this is also what? External authority, policemen, people with uniforms, government officials, religious officials, educational officials, white coat uh, medical officials, uh, you know, uh, financial officials, uh, whoever we look up to as an authority on anything becomes an official Saturnian Capricornian boss. So it rules over institutions and individuals, okay, that are trying to control, that are trying to create laws, dogmas, doctrines, rules, boundaries, mandates that we need to follow if we are going to uh, be right, if we are going to belong to society, if we are going to go out of the house. <laughs> I just posted, did I post it? No, I didn't post it, but I guess in Spain, they said you can't, you, you have to wear a mask. You, you can only go outside if you wear a mask. So a bunch of people were, uh, went naked on bicycles and with only a mask. <laughs> <laughs> They're riding their bicycles down the street, wearing only masks. Oh, my God. Anyway, uh, again, Capricorn is actually uh, Saturn and Capricorn have to do also with sarcasm and with uh, cynical, uh, you know, ironies and some of your best, uh, um, uh, what are they, com comedians. Some of the best comedians have a very strong Saturn have a very strong Capricorn because they see the mask, right? And you can identify the mask. So this Venus coming around to Pluto, to me, is this going into the underworld, uh, you know, the goddess Inanna strips down first her crown, crown chakra, you know, then her necklace, okay, you know, throat chakra. It, she goes down through each chakra until she, uh, you know, she ends up in the underworld absolutely naked, absolutely vulnerable, absolutely stripped down to the core. And this is what is occurring, okay, you know, as she goes through. And this is the, you know, the, the, this, this time period. I mean, she's really only within 10 degrees of the sun uh, the, the first couple of weeks of January. She's actually invisible, okay, um, you know, in the underworld as the ancients uh, called it, okay? She then emerges in the east. So she's now in the west. She goes down, joins and goes into the underworld, and we see her rise up in, in the east, okay? Uh, uh, beginning in, uh, in late January, she will uh, be rising. But what I want to say about this is that this is happening on both an internal uh, level and an external level. So internally, uh, we, uh, you know, Venus is my ability to love myself. Venus and Taurus is, is how the soul connects to the body. It is my inner self going down into the underworld. So, you know, each one of us may be on our own personal journey, looking at our own 
where we have been out of integrity, where we have failed our contracts, where we feel guilty and ashamed of ourselves. This is the Capricorn Saturn archetype of guilt, using guilt, okay, you know, to maintain order, maintain structure, send people to jail, <laughs> uh, you know, have laws that, you know, you break them and there's consequences. This is all this kind of Capricorn stuff. And so we can all be feeling even deep within ourselves. And it's a very good time, actually. You know, this is this is the whole thing of uh, Santa's list. Have you been a good boy or a good girl? <laughs> you know, I mean, some of this happens every year. OK, you know, uh, as the sun goes into Capricorn, um, he's checking it twice, going to find out who's naughty and nice. You know, you don't want to get charcoal in your stocking. I mean, this is all this kind of energy. OK, you know, of karma consequences whatever that is that is happening and i just want to say that um it is a good thing there's you know there's there's two kinds of guilt okay there is uh you know external forms of guilt and 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 this is the two types of of capricorn and venus going into pluto okay and and this this conjunction particularly right now is we may be facing and we may be confronted, okay, by other people, with other people, or in our own meditations where we have fell out of integrity, where we have lost accountability, where we have let ourselves down, where we have let loved ones down, where we have let uh, family members or the world or our job or our company or our country down. And remorse. And this is this is even more amplified with the sun in square to Neptune, because this also has to do with disappointment. Neptune and Pisces and the twelfth house, okay, has to do with idealism and innocence. And we all want to be angels. We all want to be rescuers. We all want to save each other. We all want to be the good guy. We all want to come in like the Crusades or, you know, like the uh, the Calvary. And I'm here to the rescue. And I'm the good guy. And I'm the good woman. And I'm your mom. Or I'm your dad. And I'll help you. We all have these kind of imaginations, these fantasies of being the knight on the white horse or, you know, Cinderella or the princess or the you know, fairy godmother. This is all Piscean, Neptunian kind of energy. And now the sun is at a 270 degree square to that Neptune. And again, the 270 degree square has to do with Capricorn. Okay. That is, that's the, that's the place where Capricorn begins in the natural horoscope. And that third quarter square, uh, you know, has to do with consequences, with karma, with what we sent out at the 90 degree square coming back. So you can look back, what, nine months. Okay, that was when the sun was conjunct Neptune. And maybe uh, we had some ideals and we had some dreams that we were chasing. And maybe we uh, promised this or we said that or, we, you know, in our uh, hopeful wishful, uh, you know, everything's going to be okay, kind of self uh, uh, committed to this, that, or the other thing. Well, now nine months later, how'd you do? <laughs> well, you know, uh, a few of us are angels. A few of us are, uh, you know, ideal, um, perfect human beings. If we were perfect, I don't think we would be human beings. So there is this disappointment with ourself. We are a work in progress. That is what this mantra is about. Okay, this week. <clears throat> and on a social external level, this is also a time and and we know this is the end of the patriarchy. This is the end of you know top down male dominated, uh, you know power freaks and uh, you know psychotics, uh, you know trying to take over and run. Okay, you know the totalitarian, uh, you know regime. 
Pluto moving through Capricorn is putting an end to this. But they're like I've been saying for many years, okay, you know, it's not like they're going to just hand over the power. Oh, here's all the money. And here's all the power. And here's all the control. We're just going to spread it all out. We're going to feed all the hungry, house all the homeless. Thank you very much. It's been a wonderful uh, 6,000 years of you uh, following us and doing what uh, we tell you. And here you go. It's the age of Aquarius. Not. <laughs> As we can see, <laughs> the exact opposite is happening. There is a power grab. <laughs> there is, uh, you know, this, you know, let's uh, let's make, a, you know, let's, let, you know, let's create a, you know, a pandemic. Let's create a virus, uh, you know, and then let's create a bunch of drugs to, you know, kill the virus, and then let's get everybody, you know, you know, to in lockdown and destroy the economy, uh, to where they are totally dependent upon government handouts, uh, you know, and us, we are the government linked together with uh, the corporations, uh, you know, in order you know to just like you know basically control the world so it's a world takeover happening uh you know and which is like it's the final i think last dying gasping breaths of these patriarchs that uh you know uh we incarnated to uh topple so Whoosh. I mean, uh, I did a whole video uh, uh, last week on uh, the astrology of 2022. Uh, that's, you know, that's coming out. And what else? Yeah, the other reason I'm not running around is I got so much going on, man. Where I'm releasing a calendar. Uh, I did the What is Love book. I'm doing a What is Love calendar. <laughs> that's coming out. I have to go to the dentist today. That's another saturn capricorn thing uh yeah so anyway where was i getting stripped okay this is you know venus pluto getting stripped we're we, we, we internally and externally i think we will also be seeing a lot more revealed particularly now mars okay moving into sagittarius honesty truth radical honesty radical truth with with venus pluto in Capricorn, Jupiter, okay, you know, coming around, uh, you know, th you know, through uh, the final degrees of, uh, of Aquarius, I think some of uh, there's going to be, uh, like I've said before, revelation upon revelation upon revelation. This is a time of awakening, and it's a rude awakening for so very many of us, uh, you know, and uh, but it is an awakening nonetheless. Yeah. And so uh, during this awakening, and uh, you know what I kind of really wanted to point out, and this is what is so beautiful, I want to read to you the Sabian symbol for this Venus-Pluto conjunction, because it's so beautiful, and it's so profound. And, I, I, and, and it also has to do with this mantra for today. And I just thought about it, you know, life, life and evolution occurs in cycles. Winter, spring, summer, fall, back to winter. I pointed out those trees. The leaves fall from the trees. The pine cones fall from the trees. The fruit falls from the trees. Now, do the leaves, does the fruit blame the tree? For, yeah, if you let me go, you let me down. You're not holding me. You're not supporting me anymore. Ah! <laughs> you know, I hate you, tree. <laughs> you know. Does the tree blame the fruit? <laughs> Does the tree blame the leaves? <gasps> You've abandoned me. You've left me. I was, you know, I was counting on you for photosynthesis, and, and I gave birth to you, fruit. <laughs> I gave birth to you, pine cone. Where are you going? Ah, you know, <laughs> I hate you, pine cone. I hate you, leaf. <laughs> no, no. So the other side, the, 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 you know, the downside of this Capricorn, Sagittarius, Jupiter, Saturn, you know, uh, ego consciousness, uh, everyday third dimensional uh, consciousness and reality has to do with blame, 
finger pointing. Okay, you know, uh, holding so and so, you know, it, it, you, you know, it's your fault. You're doing it. What we want to do, okay, as kind of liberated or whatever, you know, we want to also, you know, uh, uh, remain as awakened, as objective, as compassionate, as understanding as possible, and. Uh, I mean, of course, my idol is Gandhi. Okay, you know, it was a, a nonviolent revolution. It was through civil disobedience. It was not with guns and not with violence and not with uh, harsh uh, name calling and blah, 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 blah. That India was liberated from British control. Yeah. So there are ways of, 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 you know, correcting course of, you know, modifying, uh, you know, human uh, behavior that is um, in alignment with, uh, you know, spiritual evolution. And part of it is, like I say, the inward journey. It's, it's, it's doing our own. I, did a, I just did a yoga. Uh, well, I did a meditation. I could put a yoga, a kriya out there, but I did do this meditation uh, for the eclipse last week. I don't know if you saw that or not. A pitiful few number of views <laughs> on the <laughs> on the meditation compared to the Bailey report. It's kind of interesting, but anyway, I'm going to read to you now the Sabian symbol. Uh, you know, for this degree because it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. It's Capricorn, the twenty sixth degree of Capricorn, where uh, Venus uh, is conjunct with Pluto for, uh, you know, this entire, uh, this entire week, a nature spirit dancing in the iridescent mist of a waterfall. The ability to perceive the hidden and creative spirit of natural phenomena. The Sabian symbols make several references to nature spirits. Here we are dealing with the revelation of the spiritual or psychic forces related to the element water. Water binds all living cells in a wholesome interplay. It symbolizes the constant flow of vital energies, the fluidity of a consciousness which finds itself stimulated by change. The great cycle of water within the Earth's biosphere, oceans, clouds, rain, river, symbolizes the basic phases of universal life processes. The ascent and descent of emotional energies and of love. We can personify these phases and speak of the soul of nature and at a cosmic level of the world soul, anima mundi. Water is the substance of the telluric manifestations of this soul. It is a magical substance and modern chemists, like uh, Dr. Uh, Emoto, yeah, are rediscovering in their study of its unusual behavior in certain situations what old alchemists, in their own way, no doubt understood. This presents us with a deep intuition of super physical energies which at the end of this fivefold sequence, we will see fully mastered. The consciousness here becomes sensitized to the downward flow of occult energy in its bountiful natural aspect. I think I mentioned this before on my last uh, medicine journey. We really did a whole blessing of the water Sun square Neptune right now, uh, you know, can really bring in this psychic occult understanding and sense of this invisible etheric 
energy that is mostly having to do with the liquids and with water. And we can also uh, look at uh, the blood. Yes, the, you know, the blood and the air. And just look at this whole energy that's happening with airborne viruses that come in, but they end up affecting the oxygen in the blood and the air and the oxygen and the prana, you know, all has to do so much, okay, with spirit. Saturn moving through Aquarius, Jupiter moving through Aquarius. This is the, uh, you know, the atmosphere. Aquarius has to do with the atmosphere. Here's our atmosphere, <laughs> our virtual atmosphere. I'm coming to you from today. <laughs> anyway, let's wrap it up. What I want to just, you know, really look at is this cycle of water, you know, that is eternal and it is invisible because the water evaporates, becomes invisible spirit, becomes occult, hidden gathers as clouds, the etheric realm. They say the, the Christ will return in the etheric realm in the clouds. And then those clouds rain, we get physical water. And the water goes down into the rivers, the streams, back to the ocean and evaporates up out of the ocean again. We're drinking the same water that was here millions of years ago. Every time you have a sip of water, a drink of water, you are connecting yourself with the entire history, the occult, hidden, secret mysteries of the whole history of Gaia. So this is a very powerful, powerful time. And we want to understand that we can, we can really go inward and we can do a lot of inward transformation as well as, you know, and hopefully we don't get distracted by the Pluto polarity point is in cancer. The evolutionary path is in cancer. Going inward is really a powerful path of growth right now. And so this week's mantra, I am a work in progress, as is the rest of the world. As disappointed as I can get, I will continue to work for the good. This is the perseverance. This is the endurance. This is probably the best ultimate commitment that Saturn and Capricorn can make. A commitment to just continue to strive and work for the good, yeah, and and uh, and it comes sometimes. You know, there's there's losses and gains, and you win and you lose, and there's comings and goings, and there's spring and there's fall, and <laughs> there's rain and there's shine. But yeah, the, 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 this is the, the spiritual work that we have cut out for us. In all through 2022, and, and the seeds are being sown right now with Venus moving through Capricorn for four months and joining together with Pluto to begin a new cycle. There's a couple of things that we could change in this mantra, and, and you, can, you can maybe play around with it a little bit. One is, um, I, as disappointed as I am, I will continue to work for the good. Or as, con uh, or, you know, as disappointed as I can get. So if you're feeling disappointed, then you can go, well, as disappointed as I am. <laughs> if you're not disappointed yet, <laughs> you can talk about as disappointed as I uh, can get. <laughs> and the other one is, um, I, you know, I will con continue to work for the good. Can also be, I can continue to look for the good. So if we're getting overly stimulated with negative news and bad information and misinformation and, you know, holiday times having, you know, uh, upsetting conversations with family members or whatever, you know, I will continue to look for the good in this person. I will continue to look 
for the good in myself. I will continue to look for the good in this situation, whatever, uh, you know, so not only can we work for the good, but we can also look for the good. So again, uh, uh, modify, uh, you know, feel free to modify and repeat this mantra. I don't know if you even do. Uh, the idea of a mantra is that you repeat it over and over and over again. And, you know, you know write it on the mirror or something or whatever. I mean, I, I say these mantras to myself, you know, through the week, you know, over and over. This is the energy. It's, uh, you know, I, I write them to make them helpful to navigate through the, the planetary energies, you know, the psychic spiritual energies that are happening right now. So anyway, I am a work in progress, as is the rest of the world, as disappointed as I can get. I will continue to work for the good. That is what I want to leave you with today. Namaste. Aloha. So much love.